Joining me from Boston is Jim Wall. She's an international security expert and a research associate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So it's announced the Vincent's going to be redeployed. I was reading today that announcing carrier moves in advance, very, very rare. It's only really done to send a message. So what's the message here? And for every message, of course, there's a response. Give me your sense what the response is going to be. Well, first, Mike, on the message, I think this is an attempt to discourage North, uh, North Korea from conducting a nuclear test. They've been ready to set one off for some time now. There are rumors that it might happen Saturday in conjunction with Chairman Kim's birthday or some other event. So this is perhaps a, a, an attempt to do that. I think it's unlikely to be successful. I mean, every year the U.S. and South Korea organize these massive military exercises that the North worries is a precursor to an invasion. So simply uh, sending out a carrier group I don't think is going to do very much for the uh, North Korean decision making. And then if, if you go and you try to use that deterrent signal and the adversary calls your bluff, uh, then you're in a different place, a place you don't want to be. So I think we'll have to watch this carefully. And lobbing missiles uh, in Syria is one thing. Uh, in a, uh, destabilizing the Korean Peninsula, no one wants that, do they? Uh, Mike, you put your finger right on it. Uh, uh, you see some commentary in the press about you know, uh, a message from Syria to uh, the DPRK. Listen, uh, Syria and North Korea, they aren't apples and oranges. They're apples and washing machines. That's how different these situations are. Uh, the DPRK has nuclear weapons. Syria doesn't. North Korea has thousands of artillery tubes pointed at Seoul, the capital of our ally. Syria doesn't have anything like that uh, that's an equivalent. And moreover, while Russia is involved in Syria. It doesn't share a border. There's, Russia doesn't sit next to Syria, whereas in the peninsula, obviously, you have China right on the border of a potential conflict. So I think these are night and day. Uh, and the thing in Syria was such a limited strike, I mean, essentially against an empty air base. I don't think it has any relevance for the situation on the peninsula. Jim, last week I spoke to an expert on the DPRK here in Washington, and, and he said, uh, you know, look, Pyongyang isn't interested in abandoning its nuclear program. It looks at history and the enemies of the U.S. It says Libya rolls back its weapons of mass destruction program. They see what happened to Gaddafi. Iraq suspected of having weapons of mass destruction. They see what happened to Saddam Hussein. Uh, the DPRK, as you mentioned, uh, has maintained for a long time the U.S. is getting ready to attack it. This kind of feeds that scenario, doesn't it? It does. It seems, you know, one of the dilemmas here, and you mentioned the security dilemma in your setup, is the more you threaten a country to get them to stop doing something, uh, the more they have reason to want to defend themselves because you're threatening them. So you're sort of caught in this conundrum. But I'm not of the view uh, that you often hear in Washington that it's uh, uh, just certain that North Korea will never give up its nuclear weapons. I never use the word never with North Korea. Having been to that country and having talked to its officials for 15 years, they've taken every conceivable position on nuclear we weapons, that they give them up, they'll keep them, no first use, early pre preventive strike. And the thing about a one-person dictatorship is if the one person changes his mind, then they can have a very different policy. So uh, I hear North Korea, at least for a while, saying they were interested in dialogue. I think that's the first step right now, is to have the parties talking so that no one makes a mistake, a miscalculation that leads to an unwanted war. And that's what China's pushing? Uh, you think that message is going to get across to Washington, D.C.? Yes and no. The uh, Trump administration recently completed its policy review for North Korea, and it concluded a policy that is, quote, extreme pressure and negotiation. Now, I was pleased by that because I didn't think negotiation was going to make the cut. And you'll remember that Secretary Tillerson uh, oddly said all options are on the table except diplomacy, which I think means that all options are not on the table. But I think this policy review has concluded uh, that they would be willing to do engagement, but it's a secondary priority. But hopefully between uh, discussions between China, you know, the most recent summit, and a, and a situation that may seem increasingly dangerous, uh, all options will be on the table, and that includes talking to each other. Yeah, maybe that'll do something about the apples in the washing machines. Uh, Jim Walsh joining us from Boston. Thanks so much. Thank you.